I'm a security engineer on the product security team at my company. My company wants to develop and release a new application built on Vertex AI that leverages an AI-powered agent to answer customer questions. I'm fully on board the large language model wagon, but I'm also scared. What if it exposes sensitive data? Generative AI models can speed up my coding, my operations tasks, and my pattern matching, but I want to make sure I can build my application without putting my data at risk. I'm fully aware that Vertex AI is built securely and is backed by Google Cloud's secure, highly available infrastructure. I just like a little additional layer of defense. Luckily, Google published a Jupyter Notebook that helps protect my data by preventing AI applications from exposing my company's sensitive data to the end user. So join me as I explain how Google approaches protecting generative AI applications. Google is serious about protecting generative AI, and they approach securing AI applications from three perspectives. Secure the model, secure the application, and secure the infrastructure. Today, we're going to focus on ways to secure your AI applications by applying sensitive data protection across the data pipeline so you can make sure your output is safe and clean. We've seen many models ingest and handle sensitive personal information. So in this video, we'll see how we can prevent an AI agent from exposing sensitive data while retaining its usefulness. In this case, let's start with a customer service AI agent built on Vertex AI. The agent will be able to access account information, but is also exposed to a wide and unpredictable audience. It needs to understand their requests, but should never share sensitive data with them. We could craft a messy set of regular expressions to handle this, but there's a more secure, automated way to take care of our filtering so the AI agent is useful but doesn't expose our sensitive data. Let's walk through how to set up sensitive data protection on the data our model processes so you can prevent PII from being compromised. Our sensitive data protection service, which includes our data loss prevention, or DLP API, provides a suite of detection and transformation options to help you address these challenges. Organizations can use sensitive data protection to add additional layers of data protection throughout the lifecycle of a model, from discovery, tuning, augmenting, and maintenance. Sensitive data protection includes more than 150 built-in information types, or info types, to help quickly identify sensitive data elements like names, personal identifiers, financial data, medical context, or demographic data. You can identify these elements to choose which records to remove from pipelines or leverage inline transformation to obscure only the sensitive elements while retaining the surrounding context. You can choose what kind of data transformation methods best suit your needs from simple redaction to randomized replacement to format preserving encryption. Sometimes a simple replacement is not enough. But with random replacement, you can produce an output that looks much like the input sample, but has randomized values in place of the identified sensitive elements. This enables you to reduce risk while preserving the utility of your data. Inline transformation can be used when tuning data for AI models and can protect AI-generated responses in real time. This becomes important since generative AI models take unstructured prompts from users. Some of these prompts may attempt to manipulate the model into sharing unintended information and lead the model to generate new, possibly unseen responses. You can protect against this by scanning the input prompt and generated response to ensure that sensitive data elements are identified or removed. We've tuned the large language model, or LLM, with data that may be inadvertently exposed via a generative AI application. We want to ensure that an attacker will be completely unable to extract sensitive information from the large corpus of data used to tune the model. Let's see how sensitive data protection can help protect that data. 
To start, we've developed some code that imports the Vertex AI and SDP APIs. We defined a de-identification configuration that replaces the data it finds with the info type category. Sensitive data protection uses information types or info types to define what it scans for. An info type is a type of sensitive data, such as a name, email address, telephone number, identification number, credit card number, and others. And every time the Vertex AI API receives a prompt or generates a response, SDP will check that data to find and potentially de-identify sensitive information. To test our implementation, we decided to test different threat categories and compare the model's original response to the filtered response altered by SDP. Let's see how well it handles emails. We prompted the model to generate Homer Simpson's email. It generated the wrong email, but thankfully, we can see that Cloud SDP identified the email and replaced it with the email address info type. And likewise, we can repeat this process for data that's even more sensitive and critical to people's lives, national identification numbers. In this example, we've prompted the model to share examples of names and US social security numbers. Our data set is unlikely to contain this information, but we want to be extra careful and add some levels of protection. Better yet, we can see that Cloud SDP helps redact multiple types of national identification numbers. Schufa IDs, used to indicate personal credit worthiness in Germany, can be sensitive data, and luckily, SDP is helping us protect them. Now let's see if we can find and redact credit card numbers. After all, our data set could include real credit card numbers, and we don't want to expose them. Once again, we can see that the model responds helpfully and generates an example of a credit card number. However, SDP saves the day by ensuring that the number is not visible. This could very well have been a real credit card number. And like a truly helpful agent, this model tries to generate a helpful response when prompted to generate source code. Nevertheless, we don't want end users or developers to use our agent to generate code. We don't know the license terms for that code, and the code may be insecure or worse, malicious. Speaking of licenses, what if a curious user wants to use the agent for help in drafting legal documents? Let's say the user wants to patent her cool new invention, but needs some help in understanding the patent process. And of course, our helpful agent is happy to oblige and help the user understand the patenting process. There isn't any sensitive information provided, so SDP doesn't need to block this response. The user needs an example and requests an example of a patent from the agent. This response is blocked. We don't want the agent producing an existing or hypothetical patent. In this case, it might be best for our user to consult a patent attorney. Now that we've explored how we can use sensitive data protection to filter our LLM's responses, let's chat with Jim Miller, a Google Cloud security architect who created this Jupyter Notebook. So Jim, what challenges did you see your customers experiencing that led you to build this Jupyter Notebook? Well, customers were asking what happens when they use their own data to tune a foundational model. What data leakage risk exists for generative AI applications? Sensitive data protection is a cornerstone of a robust data security strategy. So naturally, the next step was applying it to LLM responses. And what were some of the decisions customers should think about when deciding to use sensitive data protection to filter their LLM responses? When developing Gen AI applications, Customers should think about striking a balance between creating innovative and engaging user experiences and protecting against sensitive data exposure. To do that, I'd recommend thinking about how to calibrate a few variables. First, scope your inspection set to a set of info types that make sense for your organization and application. SDP comes with 150 predefined info types that are great. But if you have something specific to your organization, like a secret project name or a funky customer ID, think about creating a custom info type too. 
Now, the next piece would be to calibrate an appropriate risk tolerance for your organization by defining the SDP sensitivity level. This will allow developers and security teams to tailor the control to ensure the application remains both secure and user-friendly. So with that in mind, how do you hope customers build off of your Jupyter Notebook? You know, Lewis, I wonder what type of unique user experiences customers will come up with. When SDP discovers sensitive data within an LM application, you don't necessarily need to block the response or redact the sensitive data. Let's say the application was an IT assistant for employees of your organization and SDP discovers a response that had the office guest Wi-Fi password. Instead of redacting the password, you could replace it with a link and instructions on how to register a device for the production Wi-Fi network. And are there additional security measures you would recommend customers consider as they work towards building a secure AI application? Yeah, definitely. While this Jupyter Notebook addresses a specific risk for data and application security, customers should approach AI development with a comprehensive framework. Google has published the Security AI Framework that aims to help organizations manage AI security risk. It's a great place to start. Great. Thanks, Jim, for building this and allowing others to benefit from it. If you want to learn more about these features and try things out for yourself, check out the links in the description to get started building your own input and output parser using sensitive data protection, learn more best practices for securing AI deployments on Google Cloud, and learn about Google's Secure AI Framework.